running and gunning. We are going? Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to <laughs> do something weird? <laughs> It's up to you. This just, is already weird enough, to be honest with you. Just hit it. Are you ready for the startup experience of a lifetime? Three determined guys building their dreams and sharing their journey. Buckle up and grab a beer, because these guys will blow your mind. You're locked in to the Jerusalem Hub audio experience, and it all starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of the Jerusalem Hub Audio Experience. I'm Shalom Makowitz. Yaron Pecht. Aaron Manlowitz. And we are Jerusalem Hub. The purpose of our podcast is for us to show you our journey of building a company, as well as answer your questions and, learn, and, and teach what we're learning, as well as learn from you, our listeners, as well. And learn what we're teaching. We're going to do something a little differently today. We're going to pick a few topics and discuss them. Um, my first topic to discuss would be, what do you guys think, what do you guys think it takes for, to, to keep your drive, to keep, when the going gets tough, like, what do you guys think is the most important things you could do when things are kind of, like, slowing down? Because that's, that tends to happen. It doesn't really, it, it happens when, when you're running a business, it'll happen when you're doing, when you're exercising, it'll happen when you're trying a new routine, something new and something new and healthy for your life. Like, what would your tips be? And, like, maybe you guys can share personal experience about how you kind of soldiered through that in order to kind of persevere and achieve what you had eventually tried to achieve. Mm. Uh, it was a very, very, you know, you know, very long question. I know. I just wanted to explain it. That's it, all. it can be tough sometimes because you get on, a, you, you have a goal, right? Yeah. And you start moving towards that goal. And, you know, always in the beginning when you start your goal, it's always fun and exciting because, you know, it's the beginning. Right. And then, you know, you have a couple of days where you kind of slow down a little bit, but then you watch some motivation or somebody pumps you up and you get back going again. And then about two, three weeks down the line, maybe a month, maybe two months down the line, that's when the excitement wears off. And now you realize all, the, all that's left to this is the nitty gritty. And if you don't do that, then it's just going to die out. Um, so, I mean, one thing you could do is, number one, every day when you wake up, something that I do is, I meditate every morning and every night before I go to sleep. Yeah, and when I, I do did that, that last night. Yeah, under your, your I gotta suggestion. Do that. It's great, and I sit there and for about whatever it is, it could be two minutes, it could be five minutes, it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, I sit there, and I just envision what I want Jerusalem Hub to look like a month from now, five months from now, a year from now, five years from now, and I just get really, like, really vivid. Like, you know, I'll see myself walking out of the office and seeing the logo on top of a building. I'll see myself flying on a plane to Bangkok to meet with international investors, or I'll see myself sitting with some local Jerusalem startups and talking about um, you know, some new projects that we're gonna be working on. And I get really excited about that. And just like visualizing that and really uh, feeling what that feels like gets me really pumped up for it for the day. So if I can just interject real quick, yeah, I know sure. that you two both, both prescribe to meditation a lot. Like I haven't really done it, I'm gonna be honest. Last night was the first time I ever actually did it and it was, it was kind of interesting. But if you could explain what the feeling is like after you do it, why you keep doing it, like whether you do it in the morning, whether you do it at night, you know, it, it, explain that to me because I want to know personally and as well as other people out there who are trying to do new things you know, they're always doing those New Year's revolutions, whatever it is, resolutions. And they, they, people need to know these things and how they can keep their themselves moving. Right. There's definitely one side to it, which is the visualization, right? Seeing what you want to see. But I think the more important part, and I think Aaron would agree with this, is feeling it. Like, you know, you see what you're going to see. You kind of put that picture in front of your eyes. You close your eyes. Maybe you're listening to the music. Maybe you're not. But you want to really feel like, you know, what does it feel like? Like if anybody that has a goal, it doesn't need to be business. Anybody that has a goal, you are working on that goal. And when you see results, what's that feeling you get? Excited, excited yeah. passion, yeah. like you feel passion, you feel Especially satisfied. You results. Exactly, fulfilled. Yeah. So you want to like get into that mode where you're seeing it in front of your eyes as if this is happening right now. And you feel the fulfillment and you feel the excitement and you feel the passion, whatever it is, you want to feel, like actually feel it as if it's happening right now. And when you can make that happen, it actually makes a, re like, I, I, when I do it, I actually feel like it's happening. Like I feel as if, 
right now in front of me, I'm seeing new things open up for Jerusalem Hub. I'm seeing new things happening. And they may not have happened yet, but in the beginning of the day when I wake up, that's my way of going like, okay, ready to get it on. It's visualizing the win, in other words. Yeah, visualizing and feeling the win. Right. Uh, it's interesting, but um, I think it's a little bit digressing from your po original point of like, how do you stay on top? Like, what happens when you hit that like yeah, so low point? If I can just explain that real quick, just so so I guess both of you can understand. It's like, sure. think of it this way. Let's say you go to the gym, right? And you're lifting weights and you're doing the same exercises every week. At some point, you're gonna be like, okay, this is kind of boring. How can I, what can I do to amp this up so that I can continue to do this? Because at the point where it becomes boring, you're just like, that's where the real work begins. The question is, is like, how do you keep it moving? Now, I'm, I'm, I apologize for cutting you off there, but I'd like to hear what you're going to say based off of whatever he said, as well as what I just reiterated. Um, so to, to take two steps back, I'm gonna do one at a time. Um, you went into motivation, so no. Um, what's the word for it? What were we talking about before? Meditation. Spacing? Meditation, right? Not motivation. Meditation, right? right. So, like, I wasn't even uh, that. That didn't even occur to me as a possibility of a way that keeps you in it when you're hitting those um, those walls of like I don't know where I'm doing. I'm not. I'm not in that new state anymore. Um, I, f I view meditation more as like I'm already wired and pumped. I just need to keep myself going. I just need to uh, to clear my head. Mm -hmm. But um, if you go back to where you get stuck or like everything's new and then suddenly like you're in it for like a, th a few days and you're not seeing the results that you've been expecting. So now you're back to what do I do now? So I think um, as human beings, we're all like, we're all into the keeping things new and um, yeah, like new and exciting. New and exciting, and if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again, which is always really important, it just gets tough. Yeah. Um, but what what's the thing about new and exciting that really gets us going? It's the, I mean, you, you, there's no other way to explain it. It's new and exciting. It's new and exciting. That's and so what I was trying to pull out was, like, that's where the passion is the highest. Right. So that's where you have that original passion. So as time goes on, as days go on, that original um, excitement and passion slowly fades away. Right. And so I don't, I personally don't think meditation is a way of getting back your passion. That's just uh, an opening up a space. But really, if you feel like things are uh, dropping out, you have to re reevaluate your passions. Hmm. My whys. Why am I here? Why am I right. actually sitting here and doing this? I like that. By the way, anybody that's watching, if you have some ideas for yourself that you have a project and you have a certain technique that you use to keep yourself going and excited, please let us know. We'll discuss it, also, drop a comment. Right, so let yeah. me continue what for, I'm trying to those, say. Yeah. Before you, you yeah. do that, for those who just joined, we're talking about how if you if you have a goal that you're trying to achieve, how how do you keep that drive going when the going gets tough? That's 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 what right. we're discussing at the moment. So, so, so I was, anything to add, so I was saying that um, it's all about keeping that passion alive. And, and what are some ways that we do it? Um, writing down your, your original goals. Right. You wrote them down once, but writing them down once is not enough. You need to go back, read through your goals every day, in the morning and the evening. Renew that passion. Right. Um, and Find your why. Find Hopefully your why. you've found your why already. Sometimes people's whys develop over time. You need to remind time, yourself. You but you need to remind it. This. Exactly. Because um, you forget it after a while. Like if, if you don't remind yourself why you're here, then and you keep doing stuff and you just keep going forward and then you're left wondering like what am I doing here you go right. back to your notebook where you wrote your original uh, goal and say that's why I'm here and then you fire yourself up again yeah I hear that right and then I would use meditation as form of relieving of, stress of supplementing the um, the inner um, turbulences that might go on in your head right Okay. Like a way of clearing your mind. Meditation can also be lead to methods of LOA of I mean, how you want to draw things to you. I'll so. be honest. Like, like uh, I'll be honest. Yesterday, I had a rough day. I was kind of tired. And I was like, I didn't want to be in the state of mind that I was in. 
And I still, you know, I, I have this thing that I subscribe to where it's no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what's going on, I'm going to do whatever it takes to to see the day through to the end. I'm going to make sure I do everything I intended on doing. Mm -hmm. That way, if I go to sleep, I can say, well, it was a rough day, but I did what I intended on doing so I can start my next day the right way. And then he suggested to me that I should meditate, and I did it for about ten minutes. I'll be honest with you, the I listened to some like calming music. I closed my eyes and I just sat there thinking about things. And it was the first time I did it, so I, it was it was a little interesting yeah. for me. But I will tell you one thing for sure is that I slept like a baby afterwards, <laughs> which was That's, really yeah, it works. And I'm gonna continue to do it and, and continue to I guess report how how it makes me feel and how I uh, you know how I do it, but. I mean, if I were to say something concrete, this is something that I kind of imp implemented on my own without meditation, is that I, I figured if you're doing something that's, that's, that's highly achievable, you have this dream, this goal that you want to do, my, the thing that I've kind of implemented is that I kind of added to my routine, meaning adding like I added more new and exciting things to my routine, like mm -hmm. to get myself excited about other things, that way I can A, work on my work ethic, work on how I can handle a workload, work on how I can handle a heavily scheduled day so that I can say, well, in the future, if I did all of this, then I can for sure do all of, you know, A, B, and C. Right. And that's kind of what I've implemented. But I'm going to both I'm going to both report on that as well as the new thing with the meditation. And I think that, that you, you actually told me to do this a couple years, a few years ago, where you said write down everything that, that you want in life, but write down as if you have it now, yeah. right, every day. And I did do that for a while, and then I stopped, and I think I'm going to continue doing that as well. Right. So I, as if for those of you who are new listeners or have been listening from the beginning, I, I'm going to do the best that I can to report on those three things, just, just to say how I'm you know, dealing with the, with the stress or with the idea of like keeping my drive and keeping my focus and keeping the motivation mm -hmm. and the and implementing all of those things. So just for those of you who, just so I can reiterate what those are, it's about adding to my routine. I added two more uh, workout sessions to my routine during the day, so that's about three workouts a day. Um, I wake up early in the morning. I'm gonna start meditating both in the morning and both at night, and I'm gonna start writing down my goals as if I have them already. That's awesome. Um, another thing that okay. I kind of wrote down here, jotted down, was was about, well, it had, it had to do with the routine and all that stuff, but it was about like keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself organized. I mean, obviously, we've all realized that once we reorganize things and keep things moving and keep things clean and, and nice, and cl it clears your head, it clears your mind. Besides for, for those sure. three things, the routine, keeping yourself busy, and keeping yourself organized, like what else would you guys add besides for anything else? I think you hit it on the head. Okay. I mean, I always hit no, it on the head. There's more to it. Because um, this is a conversation that can go on for hours. Absolutely. Well, we do have somebody who put a comment out there and like to address that on the subject. Um, what do you think? Okay, so uh, EDW Alter Shmuel Shapiro, you said, Chiddush innovation should be repetition. Um, you want to elaborate on that? Um, Oh, he's, he's, uh, I think he's reiterating what we were trying to say before. Okay, all right. The fact that, like, the value of chidush, which is renewal, like, okay. meaning going through your notes and seeing what you're up to and right. just redo it. Um, but you were trying That's to really get on to the point, you were moving on to the point of... Like, I mean, I was moving on to the point of, like, like... There, like, meditation is cool, adding to right. the routine is cool, keeping your focus is cool. But 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 there's there's something there's some inner power like there's there's got to be like like honestly recording this podcast it is the thing the central thing that that recharges my batteries and says like ah okay right. here we go something's happening here I and mean, we have people interacting thank you for interacting for those who are interacting and and mm -hmm. and the thing is, is that I want like first of all I want people to know that 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 although it we we always we always say like if you want to do something just do it it's a hundred percent true just start and go with it See, but on top but if i may interject go on top it. of that there you need a support system right 100%. yeah you just get started and, and by the way the reason why this podcast is so valuable for you specifically is because that's what recharges your batteries right. that is your support system because every single week when you're losing your motivation you're like I don't know where I'm going. Maybe something's unclear. Maybe things are slowing yeah. down. This gets you back on track. This makes it real all over again. It's like, okay, 
you know, we may have or have not been doing what's been going on or what we need to be doing. Yeah. But this always resets for the next week for the next set of actions because we talk it out right we have people that are watching uh discuss it with us and they give us new ideas and we give new, them new ideas so uh that definitely helps yeah 100 percent. i mean I, I i will say like like one thing that's very interesting is that that i've noticed is that is that the majority of the world they kind of if you were to if you were to to visualize them as like a school of fish everyone's going in the same direction mm. And then every once in a while, you have a few fish that kind of pass by that school and they're kind of going in a different direction. Or they're going in, a, in the same direction, but in a weirder way. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, is that ironically, and this is, this is hard to conceptualize until you're like at a point where you, you, you know you're doing the right thing. But ironically, this is the next thing I was going to move on to, is that ironically, like signs that you're heading in the right direction for yourself and for your success and whatever it is that you're trying to to achieve in life mm -hmm. is when everybody else starts giving you quote unquote negative attention you know what i'm saying do, i mean do you kind of get what that means yeah I meaning mean, like it, well i mean it, it, I, any I attention slightly. that could be negative that could be positive but the fact is attention equals positive whether right. it's negative or positive that's what you're saying like 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 Interestingly enough, is that that's what we're trying to go whenever, for? Is whenever, attention over here. It, yeah, hundred percent. But whenever I try to do something that's that's interesting, or that, that I try to do something in order to change my life, or to to achieve a great thing, it's always you're always you're not met with. I mean, obviously it, it depends on the kind of people that you're surrounded by, but for the most part, you're not met with a welcoming, you know, opening arms and saying, "Hey, that's awesome, high five. Instead, you're met with like some sort of like a backlash which is which can be discouraging and confusing um sometimes like Obviously whenever i get that time. whenever i get that backlash i i learn to like just take it for a grain of salt and like whatever i don't really care yeah their opinion doesn't matter to me but um it usually doesn't um but something that occurred to me i spoke to you guys about it earlier yeah. this week that something that I feel is missing from my growth personally is sure. that I don't have enough like what's the right direction right like I don't know exactly the right direction but I know that there are plenty of people that are that have made it there that I could reach up to mm -hmm. right. that I could put that I could go under their wings meaning that mentorship that's something that I think I'm missing and it's up to you guys to decide whether you feel like you're missing it or not well let me ask you what what uh made that apparent to you why did that kind of hit you in the head and go okay you know i need a mentor which by the way I, I completely agree i mean if you look at all these books and all these people that we follow uh grant cardone uh gary v napoleon hill tony robbins and everyone right. in between they all talk about having great mentors and that's why they made it to the top exactly. that's one of the most important factors i don't know it's something that just like i was going i guess i was doing a mental um uh, a mental um, like run through of all the things that is going on with us, all the things that I want to gain in life, yeah. and I was taking inventory of myself, and I realized that like um, there there's something that's missing here, and I need to move forward, and I need to take that next step. Right. And I feel like this would be besides for getting other things down, but I think this would be like the next step have someone that I could just, when I have these questions that I don't know, like Google is a great resource, but um, Google is not a good resource for when you wanna have one-on-one -on -one interaction with someone who has the experience already. You actually hit it on the head. Google is not a mentor, it's a resource. Yeah. It's a damn good one too. It's a very good resource. But it's, right, but it's people nothing. don't use it enough. Right. But um, also people, it was it was a very humbling experience when I, that went through my head like, Dude, I need to uh, I need to talk to somebody up above. I need to reach up. You need to talk to someone who's already achieved what you're trying to achieve. Exactly. Right. Because they they probably went through the same struggles that we're going through. 100. percent I have no doubt. About which it. we're going to go through whether I speak to the guy or not. But at least I'll have I'll have a knowing or an understanding of why this is so important. Right. And I think that also ties into what's going to keep you alive. So. Like what's going to keep you going when it gets tough so when you hit those tough times you have that mentor to speak to and say like yo mm -hmm. this is what's going on 
um, what do I do? Right. Or I mean, how should I approach this situation? The truth of the matter is that in any aspect in life, people always need someone. People always need that one person, whether it's one or two or however many people, where they they are who. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but they are whom you want to be, and you have to right. be like. So, can you help me out? Guide me. Show me the. Show me which path to go down. And I think that's incredibly important. And I and I, I honestly think that that we would all benefit from that as well. Um, right, I'll, I'll just say like one thing. I'm I'm definitely not looking for just one. Um, my um, show mentors in every area of your life. Right. My main um, my main goal is to find five to ten people that have five different have different things that I want to emulate right and just cling to them like I'm reaching up to like people with like Twix on their Twitter and Twix. I'm just like you know they have the oh uh, the little check oh yeah. that's cool so I'm like getting into contact with them and I'm starting to see what happens interesting like that's uh, like it's nice to have people in Yerushalayim in Israel also that's also a goal. yeah that's like, true. But you're just saying anybody that's willing to give you something of value to help you anyone that I could create a open communication with mm -hmm. that I could reach up to. Okay. Great. Um, it's hard, but that's so, part of the work. Yeah. So if any, I mean, if anybody that's watching has thoughts on this topic of mentorship, uh, what that means to you, why that's so important, hi Santos, then, you know, please get in touch, let us know, and we would be more than happy to have you guys get involved. Yeah. Um, just to, just to move on, like, like I, I touched up on this a little bit earlier, but w what are, what are signs that you guys think um, that you're heading in the right direction in, in any in anything that you're doing? Hmm. I mean, I, I mentioned before, like I, I had an interesting day a couple days ago, and I was just thinking, and I was, and I did everything that I intended on doing. It's fine. And and I had an interesting realization because there there were people that I was trying to get in touch with. Mm -hmm. Before I started doing Jerusalem Hub, before I started tr like changing my life and and working towards that change, yeah, and like they didn't have time for me, and like rightfully so, that's cool, I get it. And then now, now that I don't have time for other people, other people were starting to reach out to me. It's like I'm sorry, like I don't, you know, I'm I'm very busy. I got things going on, and the the interesting thing was is that I was like very, I felt bad. And then I realized, I was like, wait a second, but that, that means that I'm headed in the right direction because people are seeing what I'm doing and they want to get involved and whatever, what have you. And, and the, the things that I want to know is for, for, for myself as well as for the people out there who are listening, like, what is it that, that, what is it that tells you that, that, that we're heading in the right direction, that, that you, whatever you're doing, you're, you know you're going in the right direction. And this is what I meant by the going gets tough. When the going gets tough, how can you maintain the idea that you're headed in the right direction? By Two words. When you're scared and the work is hard. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, you just blew my mind right there, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, well, this, well this, this one's gonna blow it even more. No, no you know, no. when you're scared and the work is hard. So what you're saying is when you, Oh man, there was a quote. There was a quote that I saw which was so good and it was on this topic. And it said something like, work on something uncomfortably exciting. Yes. So it's, a lot, and it's, another, it's another episode of get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, well, I mean, because it always comes back to that. But how about this, guys? On the same subject, the quality of your problems dictate where you are and where you should be heading. Let me explain that for a second. So a lot of people look at the problems that they're having in their business or what they're doing, and they kind of go like, well, I'm having problems. That means that I'm headed in a bad direction. That means that I'm not moving anywhere. So let's do an analysis through a little, an ex a little bit of an example. So let's say you are going to school to become an accountant, right? You get out of school, you finish your degree, and you know what, let's start like this. You go to school, you wanna become an accountant, right? You're in school, what are some problems that are consistent with somebody who's in school? Well, you're gonna have some hard tests, you're gonna have too much homework, you're gonna have mm -hmm. late nights, right? Those are all problems that don't mean that you're doing anything wrong, those are just problems that are consistent with that kind of lifestyle, you're in school, right? Okay, that person finishes school, now they get their first well, they're looking for their first job, right? Yeah. So they're gonna start interviewing. And what are some problems that are consistent 
with somebody who's interviewing to find that job they're looking for. Right. They're going to have to interview a lot. They're going to get rejected a lot. They're going to, right? These are common problems that's going to happen to anyone who's in this specific area, who's doing that specific thing, right? Eventually, they're going to find their job, and then they're going to start at the lowest position. What are some problems that are consistent with somebody who's starting at the lowest position at their company? They're going to be get all the crap work. They're going to work the longest hours. Right. They're going to it's going to be hard for them because they, they're not going to have a lot of friends in the beginning because they're trying to kind of, kind of, they're kind of getting like involved in the company. And once again, these are all problems that are consistent with somebody in that position. So if you can right. look at where you're at and kind of evaluate your problems, like, okay, this is what I'm going through at the moment. That's not a problem. That's just a sign that I'm actually very much on the right track because these are problems. If you didn't have any problems, that would be a bigger issue right? because then you wouldn't know where to go. You wouldn't know what to do. But by, by looking at your problems, you can actually go, okay, I can see by my problems that this is what stage I'm at and whatever I'm up to. And you can apply that anywhere. If it's sports even, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like you're trying to do learn a layup in basketball. What's What would happen to somebody who's trying to learn a layup in basketball? You'd miss a lot of shots. Right, 10,000 hour rule. Right. That, yeah, and then eventually you'd start getting it and then that wouldn't be your problem anymore. You wouldn't right. be missing them anymore. What would be your problem? You, you might be now working on three-pointers. That would be the next problem, right? right. So if you just look at your problems uh, or, or your, yeah, problems, that's the best way to put it, that's a great way to gauge where to what you're doing right now and to know that you're on the right track and where to move to next right i hear that somewhat um let, let's talk about it this way like someone sure. who's learning to ride a bike and they fall a lot and they're getting scuffs on their legs that doesn't necessarily mean that they're because they're getting scuffs on their legs and they're not getting anywhere that they're actually learning to ride the bike mm-hmm what does that mean? It means nothing. It means that they're just getting lost scuffs on their legs and they're going home crying to their parents. What is what is that um, that that telling point that they are going in the right direction is that the their bike went a foot further than last time. They're seeing mm-hmm. progress. So let, let's go. Let's let's bring it back to the layup. Sure. Someone's doing a layup, but they're doing the layup wrong. Right. It's going to take them ten times longer until they get pushed in the direction where their layup goes right, or someone going to school or going to work and and they um, they have to put in those long hours, but they're just always going to stay on the bottom if they're doing mediocre work. Right. So it's the the hardships that come along with it are not necessarily a tell of that there's progress. The hardships are just like the hardships that come with it. But how do you know that it's actually you're getting somewhere? Is that through the hardships you're moving forward? Right. Right. Which, which, by the way, like when 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 those things happen to me personally, when I when I'm because I can only speak for myself, I I know that this is part of the natural course of things. Like I know that that I'm heading in the right direction and it's yeah. going to be difficult. I mean, this is what they say when they say it's it's hard. You know, you have to fail in order to succeed. No one really quite understands what that means. Failing in order to succeed is is like learning how to walk and falling down a few times until you figure out how to keep yourself balanced. Right. Like it's it's uh, that's why I kind of took the word failure or fail out of my vocabulary for now on. Okay. I don't. I don't use that word. Like I try not to as much as I can. I try to just use the word. One outcome thing I do instead re- of fail. One thing I did realize about myself a few weeks ago is I was like, I've never said that's impossible or it's impossible, and I haven't said that in a long time. And it just beca- it just became a curt like it just occurred yeah. to me. And I remember like I used to be one of those guys who used to say it all the time. I was like that's impossible. Ah, forget that. You it's know, impossible. I just want to interject for a second. I want to even share right now a problem that we just had which is completely consistent with what we're talking about right now. So in the middle of a li- the live broadcast, we had about 10 viewers yeah. and cut out, right? Yeah. And so we lost all of them, right? Okay. And that's, that's like perfect because that's exactly the kind of thing which might happen to somebody who's hosting a live broadcast. You might cut out and lose your viewers. Yeah. And you got to start over from scratch. So now we know, well, at least we're doing the right stuff because somebody who's not even, doesn't even have the wherewithal to even get out there and put themselves live they wouldn't even have that issue. That wouldn't even be on their like planet of things that might ha- happen to them. So it's a good issue. It's yeah. That's what I tend to look at. Like when oh, if I start advertising, I might have too many clients to deal with. <laughs> oh How boy. many times have you heard that one? 
How am I gonna handle all these people? Like, if I open a, a, a storefront, problem, it's, an, it's an amazing problem. Oh no! If I um, get paid more, I'm gonna have to pay more taxes. Boo hoo! <laughs> so so. Like, so to sum it up, the, the, the goal is not to eliminate your problems. The goal is to have quality problems. So you could put it like this in another way of saying it. The quality of what you're up to is completely correlate to correlated. The quality correlated to the quality of the problems that you're having in your life right now. Right. Unless you're laundering money and you're getting caught well, by the FBI. That's a pretty bad we're problem. We're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean. Okay. Hey, Ariella. Hi. So I'm gonna try and get our viewership back up again. <laughs> um, it'll happen. Law of attraction, man. Yeah, no, agreed. Either way, like I don't know, it's just a topic that 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 constantly I think needs to be discussed. I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like I know for a fact, like when I was growing up, my like, like I'll say my mom, for example, she she always wanted to try something new just so you can add to her routine or make her life better in some way, and it was hard to stick to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you grow up seeing that, you're like. Oh, wow. Hard is a word, right? To me, for the longest time, the word hard was, you can't do that. It's really hard. Like, really, you know what I mean? Whereas right. it's kind of transitioned and switched over to hard means, like, it'll get done, but it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And that difficulty is the grind. That difficulty is... The grind. It's, it's work that, that you are excited to do. Like, now hard work is... It's hard work. Like it's <laughs> it's gonna be hard, but when when you do it, it's satisfying. Like I'll give you an example. I decided to change my diet and exercise routine. Like I mentioned before, I added I added two more exercises to my day. Obviously, I'm resting here and there, but but like I I was just like that's it. I woke up one day and I said, and I've been working out for a long time, and I was I reached that point where I was like at the same level for the longest amount of time. And I was like, what, what's going on here? And I always knew that it, it required diet and consistency and dedication. And I didn't, I wasn't putting my all into it. I wasn't putting 100% into it. And then I realized, then one day I just clicked and I said, I'm gonna make it happen. I've been, work, I've been doing that for about three weeks now and like things have just gradually changed. I eat incredibly healthy. I have not put a single bad thing in my body in the past three weeks, and I'm seeing like crazy results. I mean, these, these like you, you can, you, 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 you've Absolutely. seen it yourself. And it's the, the, the thing is, is that, is that it's funny because I'm doing it and I'm staying consistent to it because it's a part of my routine. And I'm trying to add to my workload, but I'm also, which is natural. I'm also hitting that point where it's just like it's the same thing over. I'm doing it, but like you know, and I'm like, why, you know. How do I keep that drive to keep it going? And what it is is that it happens to be it's the meditation. It's the visualizing why I started this project to begin with. And sometimes it's hard for people to see that, especially when the going gets tough. And the going is always going to get tough, which is yep. why like this is something that I, that I know that a lot of people can, can identify with. This is a, a struggle that we all have. Mm -hmm. um, just just to move on well from put. that, if people have any if people have any questions or if you guys want anything to add, do you guys have anything else to add to that? No, we pretty much covered, yeah. The, yeah. covered the deal. Um, just to move on, like we, we actually had something super exciting happen today. We we sat down and we spoke with a potential candidate for the mayor of Jerusalem. Well, not, but he is a candidate for the mayor I mean, of sorry, potential the potential, potential next, mayor. Yeah, right. the potential next mayor of Jerusalem, thank you. Um, Ofer Berkovich, he is part of the party Hito Root. Right, which is the awakening party. I like that. It is a cool, name. cool name. Um we, we so we sat down with him, we spoke to him about what he thinks about Jerusalem. Like, how do you guys think that went? I mean I I first of all I thought it was really cool. Like it was a very law of attraction y kind of a moment when hmm. we when we, he just happened to be in the same place we were at and we're mm -hmm. like, yo, let's get on this right now. Mm -hmm. And we got to meet with him today. That was an opportunity taken advantage of hundred yeah, percent. It was very good. What did you I guys thought that he was very um on in sync with what we're all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like like uh, I, I repeated it when you you said it at the time he was talking about collaboration with everyone right. and right. not just taking not just having ideas oh let's uh, make uh, Jerusalem great in these different ways he actually has a whole team like there's I think he said like a thousand people who all have different um, they all have different roles in the party of taking action through all these things like the, right. the thing which that is I was pretty incredible. Like it's he's all about action, make mm. things happen, and that's what all we're all about. about. That action. The thing that I was most excited about 
was that he everything that I wanted him to talk about and that like yeah. I had thought like I, this is going to be really valuable for anybody who's watching uh, internationally or anybody who's watching in Israel or any of our friends that are watching like yeah. this is quality content and everything that we wanted him to talk about whether it be business infrastructure in Jerusalem why investors should bring their money here uh, why businesses are growing here he covered all of it and I was like right. this is amazing this is going to be great not only for us for him also and for anybody that's going to watch they're going to get some great content or sorry great education and material out of this just by watching this right it was really cool you had a list of about six seven questions right we only and within like the second question he answered all of them right <laughs> which is which was good, yeah, was crazy. but it made a really nice uh, long interview either way. But. Yeah, um, what I thought was very interesting is that he 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 very much expressed his vision for Jerusalem. Um, for those for those who are listening that don't know what Jerusalem is like, Jerusalem is a, it's it's it need it's a place that is looking for for renewed vibrancy. And he's expressing the fact that he wants to turn it into a business district. He's expressing the fact that he he wants it to be a cultural district with like culinary arts and mm -hmm. like places for people to to enjoy themselves. Um, a well-rounded. Yeah, and like city. how they're expanding the light rail and all that stuff, so that people have right. access to more parts of the city. I found that to be very enlightening because it was like ah, so we have the same vision. Another thing that I found really cool that I connected with him particularly is that his 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 organization slash party he told yeah. me, he started that. Right. Right. And he can't be that much older than the three of us. You know, maybe ten years older if possible, maybe less. Right. Well the, the point the point you're trying to make is what he has done is very much aligned with what we're up to and anybody who's yeah. in our line of work or in our vision. Yeah, he had a he had a vision and he's like, I'm gonna do this and I'm sure he went through the tough times and I'm sure he was there were those points in time where he was like what am I getting myself into? But then he, he soldiered through, and now, lo right. and behold, he's running for so, a public office. So I made this really uh, interesting observation of him. Like, the whole, everything that he spoke about, he was just saying with fiery passion. Yeah, that's everything true. Everything that he said, he oh, just yeah. kept, like, throwing it out there. Like, he like, is the thing that he most believed in the world. So if we go back to what we were talking about earlier in, in our podcast, like, what keeps you going right it's so passion. it's the passions the why so his why is so strong that every word that came out of his out of his mouth was just words of passion and that's what he believes in yeah and right. that's the like like politics aside like i know some people like have issues but like i could see that type of person running the city for for those of you just checking in right now we're talking about our interview that we just had this morning which will be up soon where we talked with Ofer Berkovich, the next potential mayor of Jerusalem. We talked about Jerusalem, uh, infrastructure growth, business growth, and why international investors should bring their money here to Jerusalem. And it's all because right. this is where it's all happening. There's a ton of growth. I don't want to get too much in detail about it because if you guys want to know more about it, watch the interview. A ton of great content there. Um, Not the movie. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, un, it's unfortunate that we're having this conversation now kind of picking apart when we met with him because mm -hmm. I wish that at the time I had that kind of occurred to me where I could have just picked his brain and asked him like how did you start where did this like yeah where did the drive come from was it hard you know because it would have been because that's kind of similar to the mentor thing you're talking about you're looking at yeah. someone who had a passion achieved his dream and now is is in actuality achieving his dream right whether he wins the election or not he did he did he probably came from like he came wherever he came from he's made serious strides he doesn't seem like yeah. the kind of guy where uh, you know he tried he failed and he's just gonna stop he's the kind of guy where if this doesn't work out he's I'm gonna, gonna try out again. another solution right. and by right. the way Nir Barkat's the same way Nir Barkat the current mayor of Jerusalem who's done some incredible things for uh, Jerusalem and is just a certified badass in general <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, he, Batman. Yeah, I'm sure he's lost a few things, and he's also a very successful entrepreneur himself. Um, and now he's running. He's he's not going to be running for mayor of Jerusalem again, and he's going to be running for a higher position in the Knesset. And that's kind of the natural progression of growth. That's kind of the natural progression of moving forward. And he may not even get where he's trying to get. And with him, guaranteed, because of the kind of person he is, this will not be the end. I think he's going to no. get there. But even if he didn't. This isn't the end. He's yeah. going to do it again and again and again. He's going to try different things. He's going to do different strategies. He's going to talk to different people. Scratch people backs. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, like, yeah, Naftali Bennett. There you go. <laughs> Naftali Bennett, 
he ran to be uh, the prime minister with his party by the UD, right? You think Something he's like done? You think he's going to stop? No, he his because his bigger vision also it's because this is this is key. There's something bigger at work than I want to be the next mayor of Jerusalem or I want to be the next big businessman in Israel as Jerusalem hub. The bigger vision is, for example, with Naftali Bennett, is I want to make a difference for the whole country and right. for everybody involved. And with Jerusalem hub, it's the same thing. We want to make a huge difference with everyone that's involved in business and economics in Jerusalem, in Israel, and all over the world. So that vision kind of drives the whole thing even if one little thing isn't working here, well, we're gonna just tweak it a little bit, try something different, right. try yeah. something bigger, try something smaller, whatever it takes to keep on moving, 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 moving. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, I, I don't, I, honestly, I, don't, I kind of drew, was about to say something totally lost, what back. I was gonna say, totally drew. <laughs> but like, it's on the lines of what Einstein says. If you, uh, if you um, try doing the same thing and mm -hmm. expect a different outcome, right. then, then you're insane. So obviously when you hit these little small things, they're not going to stop them. They're just going to say, okay, I approached this the wrong way. Let me tweak. Yeah. And they make that tweak and then boom, it's done. They're ready to go. And that's happened with us as well. Like we yeah. hit things, we make a tweak. Let's change here a bit. Let's be on top of this differently. Let's um, actually email people. Um, <laughs> yeah. Simply, I mean, simply, yeah. simply put, anything is truly achievable. Yeah. The real challenge and battle is sticking to it. S stick to itiveness. That's the stick real to itiveness. That's the real challenge. That's the true challenge. Like, like I'll tell you, I, I wake up. For the most part, I try to wake up at like four thirty in the morning. That way, I can, you know, start. First of all, start my day early so that I can, so I can get the most out of my day. Right. And second of all, because if I'm gonna work out in the morning, I want to make sure that I get it done so that I have time to get other things done as well and have the time to do it in a leisurely way, not in a, in a, uh, like leisurely. Right. And and. Every time I'm sitting there, I'm always like, okay, I really don't want to work out. I don't want to do this. Like, let's be honest, right? And then whenever I do it, I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I did that because if I didn't do it, I'd be, I would not be in a good place right now. And that's that's the hard part. The challenge is sticking to it. Yeah. And and the funny thing is, is that for those of people out there who have ideas and always, you know how you always come up with with the with the coolest idea at the worst time, <laughs> and then you forget the idea, and then you're just like, you're like, eh, who am I kidding, right? <laughs> The interesting thing is, is that the more you do something and the more you, you kind of dive into that pool of activity or whatever it is you want to call it, you start to realize, like the wheels start turning, you start to realize like, this is not so hard. Like this is not hard at all. This is, what's, what's hard is sticking to it so that you can get to that point. Which is yeah. interesting because this is something that, that Think and Grow Rich is talking about. Where it says like, it says, it says, I, I can't, I'm quoting it completely wrong because I've been listening it to, to it on and off, but he's, he's talking about essentially how, you know, if you keep putting in the work and your mindset is based on the fact that you're going to do the work and it's going to turn into something, he said, once you start producing wealth, it comes in abundance mm, right. you're, and you're getting so much of it because you're succeeding and because you're vibrant about it and you're excited and you're giving off those waves of excitement that you're not going to know how, what to do with the abundance of it. That, that's a piece I want to touch on for a second. Once you kind of break through that, and this is this applies everywhere. When you break through somewhere, you kind yeah. of don't get stuck on it anymore. Just to, as an example from my personal life, uh, I love snowboarding. I used to go and practice getting these 360s down, 360 spins in the air down. And I fell so many times. like. Probably a hundred times I fell and maybe I got it right once. Once I kind of figured it out and tweaked it a little bit and like kind of locked it in, I started getting it right over and over and over to the point where the yeah. first hundred times I maybe landed it twice. The next hundred times I landed it probably 60 to 70 percent of the time. So it's kind of like once you break through that barrier, through that wall, you don't yeah. get stuck on that anymore. Um, Everyone has challenges up to where they're hitting their challenge. But I, I want to go back to something you said about like the I, you have ideas and then like you forget them, and um, so like just going back on that, um, I used to make I made it a practice when I was working in another startup that whenever I had an idea, I'd always write it down no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Any idea, told me to any idea that. that came to my head, stupid, dumb, amazingly genius. 
amazing. which all my ideas are amazingly genius. Um, <laughs> and just course. write them down. And who knows, like, they could turn into something, we can apply them in any way. My uncle told me that once, I was visit when I was visiting America last year, I, I got to visit with him for a couple of days, and he, he the, when I first saw him, he was like, he's like, he gave me, we had the pleasantries, like, oh, nice to see you, blah, 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 whatever. Then he took me straight to this, like, convenience store, and he's like, here's a notebook, here's a pen. You have any idea, write it down. That's what the yeah. first thing he did. 100%. And I was like, this is kind of weird. But then I realized afterwards, I was like, that's actually genius. It's ingenious. Yeah. I think I have a list of like 50 things. One already. thing One thing that <laughs> I will tell you when I was talking about how the going gets tough and, um, and like... And doing new things as well as how the hard work is actually the best part about it, the grind. One thing that I kind of transitioned into, which is partially why, for example, I haven't been able to, to reach that new height of my fitness, for, you know, for example, is that, is that I kind of realized that, that in order to reach the next level and the next area of, of uh, success or yeah. reaching that success is by saying... I have to put in the hard work yeah. in order for things to actually happen. No shortcuts. Yeah, there's no such thing as shortcuts, and everyone wants a shortcut. We, the people out there have, they have short attention spans, and it, it's going to get worse and worse. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that no matter how much technology um, uh, changes and, and no, how, no matter how much more we have access to, that rule, I believe, will never change. It's kind of like gravity. You know what goes yeah. up must come down. You you might have more access to so many things, but it still takes time. It still takes work. It still takes the down dog days. It still takes you know. It still takes up and it has its ups and downs. And the second you plug the or like tattoo it or staple it inside your brain, saying it's gonna get hard, but I'm doing this for this reason, and I'm going to make sure it happens. And if you transition your language and say <clears throat> it's hard. But the hard work is the part I love about it. You know what I mean? Interesting. Like, Gary V says yeah, that a lot. The interesting thing is, is that, is that like, whenever we're on vacation, vacation's cool. You're relaxing. You get to sleep in. You go to the beach. Whatever it is, there's this recurring thought. It happens to me all the time. Maybe you guys can can say the same for yourself. But there's this recurring thought of like, I wish I was doing more today. Oh, we lost. You know what yeah. I mean? It's okay. I don't think we did. Keep going. We did. Yeah, we so, did. I wish I wish I was doing more today. Like like every time I'm on vacation, vacation is great. But there's these points where I'm just like, I wish I was a little bit more productive. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Because because at the end of the day, people like us, because we're very highly ambitious, we're trying to achieve certain things for our lives. And most people in general, whenever they're doing nothing, that's when they feel the worst in the worst. They yeah. feel the worst. Yeah. I feel lethargic when I don't do yeah. anything. Yeah, when I don't yeah. do anything, I feel incredibly lethargic. That's actually perfectly put. I feel incredibly lethargic. I just, I like doing things. And the truth of the matter is, working working out three times a day, It although it sounds crazy, it's for me. Like, if I don't have work to do for Jerusalem Hub, if I don't have work to do for work in general, I'm working for myself. Right. In the sense that I'm keeping myself busy and doing things that I enjoy. And the truth of the matter is, is that people are going to... We're like once you realize and that that the that what you, the most enjoyment you get from life is doing work towards something, towards a goal, whatever that goal may be. That's when you're truly in a blissful situation. Yeah, I just had that breakthrough right now. I wanted to share it. That's, no, that's incredible. And I'm done going on that tangent, but like I know I could probably continue if you guys would like me to. But hmm. but like that's that's something that's that's interesting. I, I wanted to get that out because it's, it's in, I, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people, whether I'm talking to my parents or my brother or to friends of mine, and I have the most realizations when I express it and I'm able to talk it out and I realize like holy moly, that's crazy. Like for example, he asked me to go to a class today. After we interviewed um, Ofer Berkovich, we went to this class about this guy who talks about, what was it, a re relationships and... He said the rules of relationships. Rules of relationships. Yeah. And obviously, I'm an open-minded guy. I'll go to the class, no problem. So I went to the class, and the one thing that I was thinking the whole time, first of all, it was a great class, and I would like to sit down and talk to him, and he seems like a really enlightened person. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing, one of the things that really resonated with me with the class is that I, I was jealous for him. The reason why I was jealous was because 
he would because no matter how much I got out of the class, mm. he got way more out of it because he was the teacher. He's he's mentioned right. it in the past also. Yeah. But yeah, 100%. like like that's what I'm jealous of. Like like he 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 gave me a lot of insight. He picked some things apart. Like there were, most of what he spoke about, I obviously already knew because it's practical things. But the way he picked it apart and separated everything and explained, like you're this and you're that, I was like, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. But then I was jealous at the point that his clarity from that class alone was much greater than my clarity because he was the one who teaching. He was the one he was teaching. giving it over. He was. And when you're able to engage people yeah. in your own thoughts. You end up learning the most. It's an interesting oh, yeah. way. It's, it's it seems almost selfish. It, it, uh, well, that was the well, whole but point. Yeah, <laughs> it is selfish, but it's not <laughs> fair yeah. because I wish that when he would give that lecture over, that I would understand it at the level that he's understanding it as he's saying it. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure why I was making. It's that the point. ultimate test of how you how well you know something is how well you give True. it over. True. So like, it's it's interesting that 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 whenever I'm able to express myself, whether it's on this podcast or whether it's the friends or family. I always have these like crazy breakthroughs. When I was talking about before, with where where science are headed in the right direction. The only reason that I prompted that to put to talk about that is because I was like, I was dealing with a situation. And I was like, why is am I dealing with this person in this way? What's going on? And I'm a sensitive individual, so I was sensitive to the situation. And then I was talking to my my mother about it, and we were talking a bit, and I was like, you know what? It means that I'm heading in the right direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was just like, and it blew my mind. And I started, then these sparks of innovation were like shooting out of my head. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this was actually a great day as opposed to like a mediocre day. And, and it was, it was, it was just interesting. I was able to express that out and do that. Mm -hmm. So thank you for letting me go on that little length yeah. and tangent. Yeah. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for now, sharing your little rant and tangent. Oh, you're so very welcome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> In any sense, if there's anything else you guys want to add to that, is there? I don't want to leave no, anyone. No. Yeah. no, I think we're good. I think we're good. If anyone out there who's listening um, and subscribes to what we're to to our podcast and enjoys our content, please, you know, if you liked, if you, okay, if you if you liked uh, if you if you like that topic and want to know more about it, let us know. We will definitely touch up on it, especially specific questions. Um, for those of you out there, um, I just wanna, I just wanna add. Uh, how much time do we have? I don't know. Just, just go until it goes. Okay. Yeah. Well, in any sense, like that's 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 really the discussion. If you want to go to the uncut and from the heart part, I was just gonna say that you know. I think that that whole section was pretty uncut. From yeah, the it was pretty yeah. uncut from the heart. So. But um, but yeah, in any sense, for those of you who are listening, I know our live feed kind of cut out. So who, for those of us who go back and listen to this podcast because they like the live feed, we apologize for that. We're going to get on that next next week. So just for, for those of you who have been listening to, to what we're talking about, we're talking about um, we were talking about how to keep your drive going, we're talking about um, what are signs you're headed in the right direction. Um, for those people who are listening to the live feed, you know, thank you for joining us. We apologize that it cut out. We'll definitely work <laughs> on that next week um, to make sure it doesn't cut out again. Um, we're gonna close, part of the grind. We're gonna close the whole topic in with law of attraction because law of attraction is kind of the way that kind of boosts yourself into that point where you're like, I'm working, but I'm losing my drive. The go it's kind of getting tough. Law of attraction is your mental stability, I guess. You say, I'm going to visualize myself in this situation. Um, kind like, of. Yeah, like I, huh? Kind of. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like generalizing a little bit. But um, like I was mentioning before about how I added more to my workout routine. I was like, yeah. I, want, I want to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm just going to do it. Forget it. You it's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm just like, and, and whenever I visualize me work, when I'm working out and I visualize things, I'm just like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can so that I can get to that point as fast as I possibly can and do it the right way. And, and ever since that happened, I've just switched, just keep working, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, like <clears throat> besides for exercise, I've been... I, I, I want things to move with with Jerusalem Hub so that so I'm I'm trying to help with the workload, and I and I'm working on that. I also am trying to help you know and and I I'm seeing whenever I'm sitting at work or walking around I see, I already see where my life is and what I want from my life, and I'm like how do I get there? And I'm just trying to do everything yeah. that I can possible to get there. The great news is according to that whole concept of law of attraction, you know, not even that, just in general. 
You don't need to know. You don't actually need to know the how. Right. You just need to keep on going. The how will come to you. The how will come. Okay, please explain that. Okay, me, you know what? All right, yeah, so this is how it works. What happens is that you gear your mind in a way that um, he talks about it in Think and Grow Rich. Okay. Um, something called auto suggestion, where you just keep, you write down what you want to achieve, write down that goal. And every day, you just keep going over that in your head, in your head. And eventually, that's all that goes through your mind, that you want to achieve this goal. And eventually, like, you don't know how it's going to happen, but suddenly your mind, something will spark your your um, cognitive clog, cogs in your mind. Like, something will resonate with you. You'll hear, like, what he does a lot in that book is that he talks about... I don't know if you noticed, he talks about like maybe hundreds of different business ideas. Right. And he says if this doesn't if this doesn't uh, if this doesn't get you going, then this is not for you and he just goes on. But he keeps seeding these little ideas. So what happens is that you need to make this amount of money or you want to accomplish something and you keep driving that into your brain that you'll get there something will pop up like you'll start being more aware of what's going around. Right. Like, um, I, I did this in um, one of our um, podcasts. I said, like, look for something, look for something um, brown. Mm-hmm. And um, now close your eyes and think, now close your eyes and find something red. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to find that red thing. But now when I tell you look for something red, you know what to look for because it's right behind you. Um, it's, it's all about just training your mind that's what that's basically the whole idea is you're just you're just training your mind to start opening to look for these things so the things pop in they just fall in you feel like they fell in your lap but really they were in front of you the whole entire time but but now it's like you know it's like it's like okay so let's say just as an example your project is you want to uh build a camper van okay I'm only using that because I did that. Um, That's interesting. So build a camper van, right? My friend and I who did this, we had no idea what we were doing. But we said, we want to do that. And then the funny thing is that we would just be talking to people, random people, and we just mentioned like, hey, we're working on this project, right? And they'd say like, oh, that's crazy. I actually know somebody else who did it. We'd like, oh, really? Get us in touch with them, right? So we didn't need to know the how because once we were open to the fact that this is happening, opportunities for it to show up because you're looking for it. So all of a sudden, yeah. you know, we'd like look something up on the internet, boom, that would be exactly what we were looking for. Right. Oh, we talked to somebody on the street and they're like, oh, it's funny, I know a guy, I can get you in touch, boom. We get in touch with him and he shows us how to do something, like uh, uh, what's called to install a solar panel on top. Uh, little things like that. So like all of a sudden, it didn't matter if we knew how to do it. It just mattered that we were going to do it. And any opportunity that showed up to teach us something or to give us the next step that showed up, we just took it and grabbed it and said, okay, we're going to put that. We're going to apply that. We're going to apply that. We're going to apply that. And right. by the end, we had a pretty dank camper van. Camper. It was amazing. <laughs> dank is, no, oh no, no, no. It's the right word. <laughs> like dank beams. So yes. I'm going to try, try my hand at a quote. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be my first official quote. Okay, go for it. Quote. Quote. The law of attraction are opening the doors that you that you didn't realize but have now realized you've already had the keys to. End quote. Shalom. Close. TM. <laughs> TM. All right. Did you? Is that close? That's not good. No, it's good. Just a lot of words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Co- conceptually, okay? for my so first right. quote, it's not. It's bad. very. It's very good. Quote. Conceptually, Thank conceptually it's great. You. But yeah, I mean, essentially, like I know it seems like you guys are talking to me, but I'm the one asking the questions. But yeah, the way that the, the when hearing those things, those success stories, those stories that it actually worked, it actually happened. I actually had a negative reaction of law of attraction. And I I identified it as like, oh, that's law of attraction, right? I was just like, I was having a bad day, yeah, and and these really weird things kept happening. And then I was with my brother. We were shopping for food. And then another weird thing happened. And then I, the second it happened, I clicked to me and I was like, I went to my brother, I was like, see, that's the law of attraction working for you. I'm giving off funky vibes and funky things are happening. Yes. <laughs> and and he, actually, here's a question that I have. Um, when that's happening, what do you guys do to kind of transition it to more to more oh, positive law of attraction. I got the, because when you're stuck in that mode, it's hard to get out of that. So so I was telling you a little bit about this earlier this week. 
when, whenever I'm stuck, because because according to that whole concept, when you're thinking negative, when you when you're in a negative mood, when you're in a negative mode, that's what's going to show up around you, right? When you're yeah. in a positive mode and mood, that's what's going to show up around you. Yeah. So for me, what I did, and it's been working wonders, besides the meditation, is whenever I have a negative thought enter my head. I have a piece of paper and pen in my pocket 24 hours, or I mean, not mm. when I'm sleeping, but actually when I'm sleeping, you I have it next have to my bed. You should have when you're sleeping. No, I have it next to my bed, and if, I, and if I'm having like a bad thought or whatever, so either way, in the middle of the day, I'll be like having a negative thought about either what I'm doing or the day or whatever, just complaining. I just open it up, and I just write it down. And if it's a reoccurring thing and it happens about an hour or two later, I just put a little tally next to it. And the funny thing is every single time you identify it and write it down, either a complaint or a negative thought or a bad thought of some sort, it disappears. And what happens is when that disappears, it opens a space for you to now get back into that positive right. thinking. And therefore, when you're in that positive thinking, number one, life just looks better in general because, hey, it just feels good to feel good. Right. But number two that's when more good things come to your life because now you're giving off that positive vibe, that positive energy. You can talk to new people, learn new right. things, yada, yada, yada. Right, so you're touching on a point that I don't think you realize that you're touching okay, upon, sure. something called mindfulness. Okay. okay. So right, what is mindfulness? It, it means basically, or in Hebrew, the kavana, when you actually yeah. think about what's going on, like you start thinking about the feelings that are going on, whether positive or negative. Mm. Um, I actually used mindfulness to get rid of headaches. The oh, same okay. thing that you said, like, when I actually cognitively, like, um, understand, like, oh, I have a headache in my head, it's right over here, and I try to give it shape and color to it, it just, like, disappears. Mm -hmm. And I do the same exact thing for, like, what you said. Mm -hmm. Just being mindful of your feelings is, it either empowers them to stay if they're positive, and if they're negative and they're not real, they that just slip right. away. Right. And this could be applied to almost anything. Right. So, I mean, yeah. if, if nothing else... If you're doing that exercise where you're writing down complaints and negative thoughts, if nothing else, even if all of a sudden you don't attract a billion dollars into your life, at least you feel happy. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You know? Like, at least you just feel like you're walking down the street and you just feel like, hey, everything's fine. Rain everything's good. Rain drops are falling on yeah. my head. <laughs> and if it, it, just for that, it's worth it. Even if, you know, even if the I love whole, when it's raining. What, 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 would be, uh, what would be your suggestion? In terms of your, if you're having that that funky law of attraction vibes, you kind of want to transition. So more what stuff. I do in these, so I do mindfulness, but I don't write things down. I kind of I, I breathe into those feelings that are coming in, and can you express that? Can you explain what that means? So like, this happened before. Like we were something with Jerusalem Hub, and like we were we're getting to some places, then I suddenly had this really negative feeling about I think it. I remember that day. And I was like, oh man, I'm in a rut. Like, I felt myself going there, so I'm like thinking about like what's getting me there, and I started talking it out to my wife. I was talking out to Shalom. Um, I was just, or other people, I was just like letting, that these feelings are going through my head. They're going, like, I felt where they were, like, I concentrated on where I'm feeling them, feeling my chest, I'm feeling yeah. them in my stomach. What is it that's going on? And I was on the bus when this was happening, on the bus to, to work. And then, like, it just, like, dissipated because mm -hmm. I was actually breathing into, I was, like, thinking about it. And I was actually giving it space rather than trying to concentrate on why is this happening. Whatever you I was resist, concentrating resists. on it. I was giving it the attention that needed at the time in order to dissipate instead of being like living in it. It's a subtle So in way. other words, if you're running to some sort of a block where you're like, oh no, this is going to happen, right? You kind of just, you kind of play with that thought until you realize that it's like, ah, no, it doesn't mean, that doesn't make any sense. So there, there, that's the subtle thing I was trying to get at. Like, you can either like take that thought and say like, oh no, what's going on? This is crappy. I don't want to deal with this. Or the way I take it is um, like, oh, I'm having this feeling. Mm -hmm. Where am I feeling this? Why am I feeling it? Where do I think it's coming from? Um, how can I deal with it? Is it something that needs immediate attention? Or um, is it something that I could talk about with somebody and right. get rid of it? Mm -hmm. um, it's that. That's the way I handle it as opposed to like, I'm feeling crappy and and you look crappy and I don't want to deal with you now because I'm dealing with this bad crap and <laughs> everything is just annoying me right now don't talk to me um, like those those are the thoughts that usually go through someone's head when they're just 
pulling and pulling on this negative vibe and but yeah did you also notice how i think people in general we tend to do this when you're having a negative thought you tend to give that this is all of us you tend to give that more validity at least equal to or more validity than a positive thought meaning let's say you're in that mode of uh oh man you know my goals aren't just gonna work just aren't gonna work out why is that any more true than saying my goals are gonna work out there's no th- there's self-fulfilling no evidence, prophecies there's no right, there's no evidence to really prove one more than another if you want to look into your past there's always evidence for both mm-hmm. yeah so so the validity and the real like how real a thought or a feeling is to you is really only as real as you make it true because because like we get stuck in a negative thought like it's definitely that's the truth it's the truth that whatever i'm doing is not going to work because it's never worked in the past right but it's just as real yeah. as saying it's going to work because things i've done also worked in the past none so it's like that's not any more real. It doesn't have more weight. It doesn't have any more form in reality. Yeah. So kind of either you want to do that, you want to be in the negative space, embrace it. If not, move on and then move it's back into that positive we, space. We touched on that, on that in the past when we were interviewing your father. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Harvey. <laughs> um, when he was talking about, I, I, I believe I asked him, if I can remember, I asked him, how do you keep doing your thing how do you keep moving how do you get through the tough parts and he said thoughts or feelings you know let the feeling go focus on what's in front of you because that's all that matters and really what we're talking about is overthinking and we're talking about feelings and in these certain in certain circumstances in most circumstances feelings don't mean anything feeling is just a feeling you know what I mean? Yeah. So what we're talking about, we're talking about overthinking and, 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 and feelings. And at the end of the day, when it comes to doing a physical task, those things don't matter. And that's, that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to end the law of attraction. Hmm. Is that the, I mean, I'm saying we're going to end that section of this podcast. Yeah. Is that, is that this is just a product of overthinking and a product of feelings. And just keep in mind for those of you who watch us and have stayed subscribed to us. Thank you, by the way. And have been watching us from the beginning. We're just like you. Everyone has this stuff. We have to find ways together to figure out how to keep persevering and, and yeah. fulfilling our dreams. Amen, brother. So before we end this this off, I was I've been surfing for some quotes. I found hmm. a good one that's and that's revolved around keep moving forward, which is one of my favorite hashtags. So I found a good one. My quote for today is if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Martin Luther yeah. King Jr. Mm-hmm. I think that one speaks to me incredibly because um, I'll tell you a story. There was I was hearing about this story where these. Have you ever heard of the forty percent rule? I think it's yes. 40. So whenever you're exercising and you're getting tired, people don't realize that their body is only forty percent done. Uh. Right, and you're saying whenever you feel like you're dead, you've only used forty percent of what you're actually yeah, capable exactly. of doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I heard this story once. Okay, I heard this story once where there are these guys who did this like crazy like five day marathon, and they all had they were like rich guys, and they had massage therapists every time they took a break and catered food, and then there was this like Navy SEAL that was just like I'm gonna do it just for the challenge, and he joined them, and he only brought two things with him. He brought a folding chair and a Ziploc bag of crackers. That's all he bought and brought with him. So whenever they took breaks, he opened up his folding chair, sat down, ate some crackers, and then when they didn't, he carried that stuff and kept moving. At the end of the marathon, whatever whatever you call these races, I don't know, I'm not so sure what, they, what you call them, at the end, he ended with kidney failure and a broken foot. And all the people who were, who all there were these rich people who had everything they needed in order to make it through the whole thing, they looked at him and they're like, wow, how the hell did he do that? And they're like, we want you to teach us how to do this. And he basically, and he, they basically, he basically showed them. He's like, he's like, you just have to. It's mind over matter. And he's like, and they, they he took them through the, through this course. And he's like, you're gonna sit here at the park in front of this in front of this pull up bar, and you're gonna do a hundred pull ups. I don't care how long it takes you. We'll be here all freaking day. But you're gonna make sure that you do at least a mm-hmm. hundred pull ups. Mm-hmm. And then once you understand the hard work, that's what we were talking about. The hard work to put in and the satisfaction after fulfilling all of that work, then you realize that you're capable of so much more. So if I can just reiterate that quote one more time, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. 
But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Martin Luther King Jr. Amazing. Like Our it. challenge to you is to tell us about your law, uh, things that you've implemented with the law of attraction, as well as reach out to us if you like the content. We want to hear about it because we would like to discuss it. Um, I would I, I invite everybody who has listened in the past or is listening now or new listeners um, to please 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 hit the like button and and subscribe on YouTube. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Like our stuff. If you like our content, share our content. We greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you very much for listening. This concludes episode 15 of the so Jerusalem 15. Hub audio experience. And with that, with that we end. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe, support us, like, share, and subscribe, and you'll get more of our content, whether you like it or not.